So let's actually look at this question. This is a very nice question about basic singly linked lists. And the question asks you to find the kth node from the end of a singly linked list. So let's understand the problem. Imagine if I have a singly linked list like this, right? So each of these is my node and they'll have some value in them, right? Let's assume this is my singly linked list. Okay. Just, just let's, let's create a singly linked list, right? Let's, let's just place some values. It could be any value here. Let's just say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? So let's assume I have seven nodes here just for simplicity. Let's understand the example. Let's count. So this is my head or this is my start of the linked list, right? So let's say this is at first position, second position, third position, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So right now, how many elements do I have in the linked list? Let's call that as N. So N equals to seven. Okay. Let me also color code. So let me also count it from the end. So this is the first node from the end. This is the second node from the end, third node from the end, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Right. So imagine, imagine if, so what is being asked here, find the kth node from the end of a singly linked list. Let's assume just for simplicity that K equals to three. So it's asking for us, it's asking us to find the third node from the end, which means it's asking us to find this node. Because look at this counts. I'm going in the reverse order, right? This is the third node from the end. And that's what it's asking. It's, it's asking us to find the kth node from the end. Okay. I hope this example is clear. So if k equals to three for this linked list, that node value will be E, right? Imagine if k was equal to five, then what happens? The fifth node from the end, and that will be node C, right? And also remember kth node, suppose if I know the number of nodes, if I know the number of nodes is seven, then the third node from the end, look at this, what is third node from the end? So if I know N, right, it is going to be N minus K plus one node from the beginning, right? Kth node from the end is nothing but K minus one plus one node from the beginning. Look at this here, N equals to five, N equals to seven, K equals to three. So seven minus three plus one equals to fifth. So the third node from the end here is nothing but the fifth node from the beginning. Similarly, if K equals to five, if I want the fifth node from the end, what does it mean from the starting? It is again seven minus five plus one, which is equal to two. So the fifth node from the end is same as second node from the beginning, right? It's, it's, it's same as the second node from the beginning. Sorry, did I mess up somewhere? Seven minus five is two plus one is three. Sorry. This has to be three, not two. Seven minus five plus one, right? So it has to be the third node, not the second node. And hence the value will be C and not B. I'm sorry. I just messed up the math here, right? And this, this, this is correct. N minus K plus one node from the beginning. So the key observation, the key observation here is if you know, if you know N, first of all, if you know N, then Kth node from end, Kth from end is same as N minus K plus one node from beginning. This is a key observation that we will use to build a simple algorithm for this. Okay. So now given this fact, how do you solve this? Let's write our first version, right? So let's write the first, first, first uh, pseudocode. We, we always write our code with pseudocode first so that we have a good understanding and then we'll go to the proper code. Okay. So let's go step by step. First step is I have to compute N. Okay. Find N, which is the number of find N. Okay. How do I find N? I'll start with the start node. How do I find this? It's very simple. I start with a pointer pointing to the start node and nobody has given me the number of number of nodes in my linked list. My input, when somebody gives me a singly linked list, the input is going to be a pointer or a reference to the first node. That's all they'll give me, right? They'll give me a pointer or a reference to the first node. That's all. They don't tell me how many, how many nodes I have in the singly linked list. So, so now to find it out, what do I do? I initialize a pointer P to the start. And then I keep traversing this. I simply traverse this one by one by one till the time I reach a node and I'll keep, I'll keep a counter. Obviously I'll keep a counter that will start with one and I'll keep going on till the time I find a node whose next pointer points to null. Right? So that that's how I can find N. So I can find N with one traversal with one traversal of the singly linked list. And how much time does it take? If the, if the singly linked list has n nodes, this takes order of n time because this is a simple for loop, right? Okay. That's step one. Step two. Once I've done that. 
okay i will just compute i'll just compute a variable called x which is because what is my input the input will be the start and the value of k okay then i'll say x equals to n minus k plus 1 right now if this value this is important if this value is 0 or less than 0 okay look at this if if, if i have only seven elements and if somebody asks me to find the eighth element from the end that's of course like meaningless right so first i check whether this is greater than equal to 1 or not okay only then only then so this check has to be performed this is like a sanity check to ensure that they have not given you a value of k that is larger than uh, that is larger than n okay if they give you then you should you should raise an alarm and say there is an error in your input value k once you do that then you basically again traverse you basically traverse the you traverse the linked list again from start to end again till till from start to end till the time you reach xth node right you can always do that right again you create a pointer you keep a counter once you once at this very beginning you'll give it a value of 1 then you'll keep incrementing that value till the time you reach the xth node and x is nothing but n minus k plus 1 right here again here again look at this this is order of 1 obviously because this is just a simple mathematical calculation and a simple logical check now this will require one more traversal this will require one more traversal let's assume k equals to 1 let's assume what is the worst case k equals to 1 in such a case i have to traverse the whole list again in this case right so when i traverse the whole list the worst case time complexity of this step is going to be order of n because i start with the first node i'll have to keep traversing till the time i get n minus k plus 1th node if k equals to 1 this whole thing x becomes n so i might have to traverse the whole whole linked list again right so what is the total time complexity of this the total time complexity is order of n itself but here i am doing two traversals i am doing one traversal here and i am doing another traversal here okay so this is basically an order of n time complexity algorithm there is no additional space except a few pointers so it's only order of one space very good but here i have two traversals let's not forget that i have two traversals right i have two two traversals of my linked list okay this is this is the first algorithm can i perform better so the question now the next question I have in my head is the next question can, that I have here is of course while the time complexity is order of n space complexity is order of n very good instead of two traversals can I find can I find the kth node from end the kth node from end using a single traversal using a single traversal right because a single traversal is going to be obviously taking less time then two traversals right so can i do this okay let's think about it let's think about how to how to do it intuitively okay so let's 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 actually go back to the same diagram that we have we'll reuse this diagram right imagine if i have so here here is the, here is the fun part here is the here is the idea or the key crux of the idea here imagine if i have two pointers okay let's assume i have a pointer p that points to the start node let's assume i also have a pointer q that is pointing here okay so what i'll do here is this okay so step by step okay logically what i'll do here is first i'll find n okay actually i don't even have to find n to be honest okay let's not because you're wasting one traversal there right so i will not even find n what i'll do here is i'll just simply initialize two pointers p and q to the start node okay first i will move because i already know the value of k i will move my q pointer by k steps imagine k equals to 3 imagine k k equals to 3 remember i don't know n right now in this methodology because i have not traversed and hence i don't know n okay so i do not know n i don't know it's still a question mark for me okay i know that k equals to 3 so what do i do first i will move my q pointer by three steps okay so i'm starting here so this is step 1 because i'm already at the first node then i'll move it to second node i'll move it to third node right so i've basically moved it to the kth node from the beginning okay so when i do that what happens let me just erase this okay so what am i doing here i'm moving my qth node to the kth node from the starting my q pointer i'm sorry i'm moving my q pointer to the kth node from the beginning look at this my k equals to 3 right so i've moved it to the third pointer that's the first step now now comes the fun part now comes the ingenious part here okay 
Now comes the innovation. Now what I'll do here is since it has moved three positions, look at the gap that I have between these two. Okay, when this is at one, this is at three. Okay, now I will move both these step by step. So the way I'll do it is, I'll increment the Q pointer once and I'll increment the P pointer once. So now what happens? This will get, this will move and this will also move. So now my P will point to this. So P was initially pointing to this, right? So P will now point to this, right? And Q will point to this. Basically, what did I do? I moved my Q pointer by one step. I also moved my P pointer by one step. Okay. Again, I'll re keep repeating this. Okay. Next step, what will happen? My P will now move. Now let's see what happens now. If I keep doing this, my P will now move here. My Q will move here, right? Again, Q will move here. P will move here. Okay. Let's let just, let's just run it so that we understand it better. Okay. P will move here. Q will move here. If you notice, there is always this gap between P and Q. Okay. There's always this gap. What is this gap exactly? If you notice when P was here initially and Q was here, what is this gap? This gap is basically k minus 1. This gap, look at this. Q is at third position, P is at first position. So what is that gap? That gap is exactly k minus 1. Okay. But anyway, let's keep doing it. So let's assume I keep moving Q by one step and P by one step. When I do that, I'll keep doing it till the time, till the time Q reaches the last node. So what happens then? When Q reaches here, where would P reach? P would be k minus 1 steps behind it, which means P will be here. Now, how do I know that I've reached the last node if the next pointer is null? Very simple, right? If the next pointer is null, I know that I've reached the last node, right? When Q next is null, because Q is pointing to this, when Q next is null, I know that I've reached the last node. And when this happens, my P will reach the K, the, the Kth node from the end. Because look at this, where, where is my, where is my Q now? My Q is at nth node. My Q is at nth node from the beginning. Right, my Q is at nth node from the beginning. Okay, so and I know that my P pointer is k minus one steps behind it. Okay, so where is my k? Where, where is my P pointer? It is at n minus k plus one from the beginning, and this is what we wanted earlier also. Even in the even in version one, even in the first solution that we had two traversals, right? At the end of it, because n minus k minus one is nothing but n minus k plus one. So in this approach. In this approach, I have literally done only one traversal of my, uh, only, uh, I've only done one traversal. I've not done two traversals and still I'm doing very good. Okay. So let's write the simple pseudocode for it step by step. Step one. Okay. Initialize two pointers P and Q pointing to the start. Okay. Step two, move Q, move Q by, move Q to, not by, move Q to, to kth node from beginning, to kth node from beginning, from, from begin, okay, from the beginning, okay. Once you do that, now move P and Q nodes, P and Q nodes, step by step, in tandem, step by step. In tandem basically means, once you move it, you move the other thing also. That's what in tandem basically means in English, right? You move them step by step in tandem till the time, till Q reaches till the time Q reaches the last node, the last node. Once this reaches the last node, once this reaches automatically P reaches, automatically P reaches the N minus K plus one to node from begin, from begin, which is same as, which is same as Kth node from end, which is same as Kth node from end. That's it. Whatever P is pointing to, you return that value. Okay. And in this whole exercise, I've done again, the time complexity of this, look at this, to move this, I would take order of K time, right? Now to do all of this again, I would take order of N time, right? Again, when I'm moving this Q would only move N minus K steps, right? So the total time complexity of this will continue to be order of N time, right? And space complexity is again going to be order of one. Of course, I have an additional pointer Q here in addition to P, but that's okay. Just a constant time. But the beauty of this approach is I'm just solving it just in one traversal, right? I'm just doing one traversal, of course, using two pointers. I'm using two pointers here, not a single pointer, but still it's just a single traversal. 
right very simple very elegant solution again lot of linked list problems lot of nice linked list problems can be solved using two pointers and some innovative solutions like this in the next video we'll see the code snippet for it line by line and and understand how actually everything everything works together what we've seen right now with pseudo code my suggestion is always please write pseudo code like this because then converting this into code becomes easy this is basically explaining what you're doing in english right of course once you have this you have to be careful about converting this to code but it's still very